10 years ago, robots were clumsy, loud, and were hardly staying upright on their own. Fast forward to today, and now we're watching humanoids like Figure 3 walk and talk and pick up boxes almost flawlessly. Sure, there have been big advances in AI, but how did we leap that far that fast in terms of robotics? Well, in today's video, let's take a look what makes Figure 3 such a milestone and why this moment matters for developers. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's dive into it. So Figure just demoed their newest humanoid robot called Figure 03. And the demo looks quite impressive, but I'm wondering what is happening under the hood. So let's try to figure out what is happening behind the scenes. First, let's talk about joint movements. Back in the day, early robots like Boston Dynamics Big Dog ran on hydraulics. They were powerful, but messy and inefficient. Figure has now switched to using electric actuators, which are lighter, quieter, and dramatically more responsive. They use double torque density, which basically allows more twisting force per kilogram of motor without overheating or draining the battery. Battery. Most of their joints use something called a quasi-direct drive, a low ratio gearbox that cuts friction and lets the control software feel the world almost instantly. You can think of it as high resolution muscles, more responsive, less delay and way easier to balance. And now let's talk about walk stabilization. This is one of the hardest things for a humanoid robot to do. Balancing a humanoid is hard because you're basically juggling physics equations in real time. Older robot systems used fixed routines which decided what to do based on fixed commands. So if you lean left, move the right foot here. Now control stacks have become hybrid. They are now part physics, part machine learning. The physics side runs a method called hierarchical inverse dynamics hundreds of times per second. That's just a fancy way of saying it continuously solves how to move every joint so that the robot's center of mass stays inside a support polygon. This is an imaginary shape drawn around its feet. If the center of mass leaves the zone, the robot might tip over. The fact that we see figure walking on uneven terrain in one of the demos suggests that they have truly solved the balancing issue. Although, as we can see, it is still walking very slowly, and this would make for a really annoying slow delivery robot. But still, this is very impressive. Next, let's talk about vision and touch. Early robots used to have sort of a tunnel vision. They had a single camera with a heavy response lag. But today, humanoids like Figure 3 have stereo cameras with a 60% wider field of view running at twice the frame rate and one quarter of the latency. And that's a big deal because in robotics, latency is death. If your sensors are even 100 milliseconds late, your performance speed will have a serious lag. What's even cooler is the fact that Figure 3 has palm cameras and fingertip sensors that can detect forces as light as 3 grams. That's like feeling a paperclip slipping before it falls. This combination of vision and touch lets it perform precise manipulation. And here's something nobody talks about. Heat and cooling. Here's the unglamorous truth. All this hardware heats up. Actuators, GPUs, and batteries packed into a tight shell create a massive thermal load. Figure claims to have a battery design which includes active cooling channels built into their die-cast frame. And they claim that they use forced air cooling which moves heat through the ducts inside the body. Figure also uses a 2.3 kilowatt hour battery pack which can sustain the humanoid's activity for up to five hours and supports two kilowatt inductive charging through its feet. So basically they have found a clever way to solve both heating and battery charging using its own design and built limitations, which is quite cool. But now let's talk about execution. Figure uses a large behavior model called Helix to perform most of its actions. I talked about large behavior models in one of my previous videos, so you can check that out over here if you're interested. But the coolest thing is that Figure is constantly learning and iterating. When it's not on active duty, it can offload data to a data center using a 10 gigabyte per second millimeter wave links for centralized training. That way, all the robots can collectively improve their reasoning with every iteration they perform. But as developers, I'm sure we're all asking the same question. 
What is actually controlling figure? What does the code look like? What kind of AI toolkit is it running? And how can it run inference efficiently on those onboard GPUs? While figure hasn't open sourced its control stack, there are some interesting breadcrumbs that give us an idea what might be happening. Their GitHub shows a fork of Nvidia's Isaac Lab, which is a strong hint that figure trains its motion and manipulation policies in large scale simulation before transferring them to real robots. Isaac Lab lets you spin up thousands of parallel virtual robots, randomize their environments, and train control policies using reinforcement learning. That's exactly how you would teach a humanoid to walk, grasp, and recover balance without wrecking real hardware. Then we see that their organization is using repositories like Motor Real Time and Motor Messages, suggesting a layered architecture that separates hard real time joint control from higher level logic. This suggests it's running on low level C loops, keeping the actuator stable while higher layers handle planning and coordination. Another repo called LightGlue ONNX focuses on feature matching and visual alignment. That is likely part of their perception stack. It helps the robot identify key points in the environment for depth and spatial reasoning. Pair that with NVBlocks, a GPU accelerated voxel mapping library, and we get a clear picture that figure is probably building dense 3D reconstructions of the world in real time, not just using 2D camera feeds. Together, these clues suggest that Helix, their proprietary brain, sits on top of a very modular stack. So what does this all mean for us developers? Well, we are entering in a new era where robotics are no longer locked behind billion dollar labs. Tools like Nvidia's Isaac Lab, Isaac Sim, Mujaco, and Brax make it possible to simulate and train robots entirely in software, no hardware required. And libraries like NVBlocks or LightGlue ONNX are open source and lets you experiment with dense 3D mapping and feature tracking on your own GPU. I'll leave links to these tools in the description if you want to check them out. What I'm trying to say is that the same ideas powering figure three are now accessible to anyone willing to explore them. So you can literally train your own robotic agent so if you ever considered jumping into the field of robotics, now's the time. Because the next frontier of software isn't just apps or AI models, it's in physical intelligence. Robots are becoming the next generation of computing platforms, and this just might be the next technological gold rush. But what do you think about figure three and robotics in general? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you like these types of technical breakdowns, be sure to subscribe to our channel. This has been Andres from BetterStack, and I will see you in the next videos.